Okay. Ready for the revolution. Right. I'm an organizer with a uh, KPFK radio, do a program at KPFK radio. I'm also an organizer with the All African People's Revolutionary Party. So what I'd like to do is start with the macro, the broader view, and then focus on the particular the Congo. Number one, our objective, the objective of any Pan-Africanist, the objective of Marcus Garvey, of Kwame Nkrumah, Sekou Toure, Patrice Lumumba, Mobita, Mobita Kito of Mali, was the total liberation and unification of Africa. The total liberation and unification of Africa was only when Africa is united can be stopped the imperialists, the French, the Belgians, the Germans, the U.S. from exploiting Africa. It's no different than the United States. What's critical, what's critical is how powerful would the United States be? Instead of one United States of America, there are 50 separate countries, each with their own language, their own armies, their own economic interests, constantly warring among each other. What makes the United States a world power is they get that unity, that United States of America. We need the United States of Africa. So our objective can't just be the Congo, but the liberation from neo-colonialism. The IMF, the World Bank, the French, the British, the U.S. control. Right now in Ethiopia, the dictatorship in Ethiopia is controlled by the United States. When Bush and now Obama says go into Somalia, they run into Somalia and kill fellow Africans in the Horn of Africa. So Africa must be free from foreign intervention. In particular, in terms of the Congo, there was a panel that came out of the United Nations Security Council. It said that the multinational corporations and other external actors, foreign company countries, were complicit in and enablers of the genocide in the Congo. The question becomes why? Over six million people died. The issues are natural resources, coltan, casserite, gold, diamonds, coffee, timber, and cobalt. Let's look at coltan. Coltan is short for colomite, tantalite, a black tar link mineral found in the Congo. Over 80% of coltan comes from the Congo. When it's refined, processed, it becomes a heat resistant powder that can hold a high electrical charge. A small mineral that can hold a lot of electricity, like a battery. It is critical in creating and storing energy or capacitors, which are critical to portable electronic units. What devices are we talking about? We're talking about cell phones, laptop computers, pagers, jet engines, rockets, cutting tools, camera lenses, x-ray films, inkjet printers, hearing aids, pacemakers, airbag systems in cars, GPS navigational systems, video cameras, ignition systems, turn turbines, also products like Sony PlayStation, Xboxes, who are the primary exporters. Exporters are Rwanda and Ugandan government finance mercenaries. What's what they call militia terrorist groups. Col Rwanda, Coltan, C O L T A N. All right, okay, Rwanda and Uganda. These countries are neo colonies in the United States. Andrew Young, among others, have taken and adopted Rwanda and made it a stooge in the United States. These governments are financing paramilitary terrorist groups to go into the Congo, the eastern region, and exploit. The coltan. Rwanda and Uganda ex exported over $500 million worth of coltan, yet Rwanda and Uganda produce no coltan. Now how the hell can they exploit, export, export coltan and produce no coltan? They can export it because they're stealing it through these guerrilla terrorist groups from the Congo, bringing it into Rwanda and Uganda, exploiting it and exporting it to make money. Who are the primary foreign corporations that are getting the natural resources? They are KBOT Corporation of Boston, OMG Group in Cleveland, Ohio, AVX in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Eagle Winds Resource International, Ohio, Kemet Electronic Corporation, Greenville, South Carolina. Who buys the natural resources from these American corporations to make the product? Nokia, Motorola, Compact Computers, Dell Computers, Hewitt Packner, IBM, Lucian, Ericsson, and Sony. They're buying it from the wholesalers, from the United States Corporation. Now let's look at some of the other contradictions. The International Criminal Court focuses only on the rebels. The International Criminal Court focuses only on the rebels, but not on the corporations that I've mentioned. 
that finance and give life to these death militias. Therefore, the International Criminal Court is camouflaging the contradiction by focusing on the rebels and not the financiers. They're providing them with the money for the weapons. They're providing them the markets for the stolen minerals going into the United States. Who controls the banking system? The IMF and the World Bank controls the economies of Rwanda and Uganda. The IMF and the World Bank controls the economy of Uganda and Rwanda. They know the money coming into Rwanda and Uganda is blood money coming from Kotan and the blood of the five million Congolese people who are being killed and the millions of women being raped. They provide, the IMF and World Bank provides the funding for the Rwanda and Uganda government, which then finance and train and arm these militias coming into the Eastern Congo. But this transport system, military system program, import exports, is financed and supported by the IMF and World Bank. And the dominant force in the IMF and World Bank is the United States. We demand that the sanctions be instituted against all military assistance programs in Rwanda and Uganda. And all funds, all funds from all governments stop being used by the IMF and World Bank to finance these wars. We demand a monitoring of transit companies criminal investigation of key corporations involved in the illegal trade, specifically the air transport systems, because the bulk site, the coal tent is being flown out. Who are these air transport systems? The banking, financing, the transfer of the capital. Who are the military governments, the military weaponry? Where is it coming from? We demand that the armed manufacturers be withdrawn. We demand the tracking of the minerals. The minerals that end up in our laptops, end up in our cell phones, we demand to track where do those minerals come from? For your Dells, for your Motorola phones, and cell phones and digital, where do they come from? They're blood minerals, we need to know that. Also, since we're in Hollywood, we gotta take a slap at Hollywood. Set to the music of the Rolling Stones, a four minute video called Gimme Shelter, filmed and produced by Ben Affleck, who's the greatest conspirator with the, with the, with the genocide in Uganda. It was used by the United Nations Commission, the High Command, the Refugee Commission, to raise finance capital as a profit-making industry. The question of the refugee situation in the Congo has been documented, and I can provide the references, as a profit-making center for the United Nations Commission of High Refugees. Since, since 2007, Ben Affleck has repeatedly traveled to Rwanda and Uganda. He is closely affiliated with, closely affiliated with President Paul Kagame, whose government in Rwanda is one of the major forces for the guerrilla movements that's killing the people of the Congo. Also, actress Jessica Land has been a UNICEF goodwill ambassador in the Congo. Actor George Clooney, the United Nations Messenger of Peace in the Congo. Actor Mike Douglas has been a United Nations Minister Messenger of Peace in the Congo. Angela Jolie has been a United Nations Commission of Refugees Goodwill Ambassador to the Congo. These people are camouflaging the fundamental contradiction that the issue of the Congo is an issue of multinational corporations. The issue of the Congo is an issue of Hollywood stars being used to hide the role of multinational corporations, the United States, England, France, and Israel in the contradiction. They're using, they're using the camouflage to focus the contradiction as if African people are killing African people because that's our nature. Black on black crime is that's our nature. There's no external funding. That's a total crock of shit. It obscures these Hollywood entertainers who get popular media, obscure the fundamental contradiction between financed multinational capital corporations and the oppression of the people of the Congo. Ben Affleck's recent video that just came out Calls give me shelter ignores the reality of the major players in the war blaming black on black crime. Clearly, we know from gangbanging in the United States, all you gotta do is provide education and jobs, gangbang activity will be reduced to zero. When you ain't got no job, when you ain't got no education, you got a racist police force, you get crime violence. But we like to say that it's very important for us to not focus just on the mercenaries from Rwanda and Uganda, but look at the government of Rwanda and Uganda, look at the role of multinational corporations, look at the role of the United States that controls the IMF and World Bank and the role of Israel in this phenomenon. We thank you very much, and as we said, ready for the revolution.